Hello students, this is Dr. Ben. I'd like to work on another problem out of chapter 6. It has to do with the topic of work and energy. So here we have a situation where uh, a car is stopping in order to not run into a student and um, there's some information about the motion that's given and basically the point of the problem is to try to um, prove to the police officer that we were not speeding. So I drew a pictorial representation of the situation over here. So we've got the car that's moving with some initial speed and it slows to a stop some distance later and the acceleration is opposite to the direction of the motion. And over here we have the force diagram that shows the, the frictional force opposite to the velocity. So that's making, um, making the car slow down. And I also wrote down the information that we were given. The initial speed of the car was in meters per second. Um, I'm sorry, it was in miles per hour and I looked up the conversion factor. It was 0.45 meters per second per mile per hour, so I already multiplied that out. The final speed of the, of the car is zero. The coefficient of friction were given to be 0.6 and we're told that the skid marks are nine meters long and essentially what I'm going to do is to try to calculate what the value of this of the length of the skid marks are for this situation and see um, see if they're nine meters or not and then we can decide whether the person was speeding or not. Alright so we want to use the work kinetic energy theorem to solve this and we see that there are three forces that are acting on the car Um, there's the normal force and the weight and the frictional force. But two of the forces are perpendicular to the motion, the normal force and the weight, and so they do no work. So when we write down the work kinetic energy theorem, the work done by all the forces is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of, in our case, the car. There's only going to be one term on the left-hand side and that will be equal to the work that's done by friction. So the work done by friction will be equal to the change in the kinetic energy, which will be the final value minus the initial value. And in our particular problem, the final value is equal to zero. All right, so we need to use the definition of work, how we calculate the work from a force, and the kinetic energy in order to try to solve for the length of the skid marks. All right, so the work done by friction will be equal to the value of the frictional force multiplied by the distance traveled multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. And so the frictional force is backwards, but the velocity is forwards, and so that angle is 180 degrees. And then on the right hand side, that will be equal to zero minus one half m v original squared. All right, so the cosine of 180 is equal to minus one, so we'll have minus f times d is equal to minus one half m v original squared. Well, let's solve this for the distance d, which is the length of the skid mark. So the minus signs are going to cancel out. We'll have m v original squared. We have our 2 in the denominator, and then we divide by the frictional force, f. So m v original squared divided by 2. The frictional force is going to be the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And then if we go back up to the force diagram, remind ourselves that in the vertical direction the two forces have the same size because there's no acceleration. So the normal force is going to be equal to the weight. So we'd have mv original squared divided by 2 mu mg. The m's cancel out, and we get v original squared divided by 2 mu 
times g. All right, so let's get our calculator and calculate that number. So the original velocity was 11.3 meters per second. So we'll square that, divide it by 2, divided by 0.6, that was the coefficient of friction, divided by 9.8, and that gives us 10. 0.9 meters, and so that's actually the the actual length of the skid mark if we start at an original velocity of 25 miles per hour. So if the if the real skid marks are only nine meters long, then the original velocity actually had to be less, and so the officer should not write a ticket. Because the person was going slower than 25 miles per hour um, in the actual situation.